and good evening. Well, after being isolated from the rest of the nation and the world, WA is finally set to open its border in a fortnight. Mark McGowan making the announcement this afternoon. Natalie Forrest joins us live this evening and Nat, the Premier, has been forced to act because of rising case numbers. Neralda, that's right. Yes, he has been forced to act. But uh, after almost 700 days of border restrictions, this is the news many West Aussies and indeed a lot of people right around the country have been waiting for. March 3rd, the hard border will come down. Now, the Premier says it's because Omicron is spreading in the community. Almost 200 cases today. And also the peak over east is subsiding. So he says now is the right time to open. But with that will come more restrictions. Admitting WA's hard border is redundant. There comes a point where the border is ineffective when you get to high case numbers within the state. The Premier announcing we will rejoin the rest of the country and the world on March 3rd. March 3 will be a step forward for Western Australia. A safe, a safe step forward taken at the right time in the right way for the right reasons. Airlines have a fortnight to get ready. Vaccinated travellers won't have to quarantine, but will need to produce a negative rat test and get a G2G pass. With the Premier adamant he won't backflip on the decision after reneging on the February 5 date. Uh, he must provide an ironclad guarantee that that date will not change. Businesses, the community, families will now start to plan based on this advice. This date is locked in and I can't foresee a situation where it would change. But opening up and growing case numbers mean a return of some restrictions. From Monday, masks will be mandatory right across the state. Home gatherings will be limited to 30 people. Private outdoor gatherings capped at 200. The two square metre rule applies to a range of hospitality, entertainment and fitness venues. A 75% capacity cap for seated venues like stadiums and auditoriums. Dancing is still allowed, but there's a 500 person limit for nightclubs. Given our strong financial management. We will be in a position to support affected local businesses in the future and we'll have more to say about this in the days ahead. As case numbers rise, almost 200 local infections today, those numbers will skyrocket. 10,000 cases a day are expected at the peak in late March, with 443 patients in hospital, 53 people in ICU and four lives expected to be lost every day. Because we are in such a good situation that we will end up suppressing the height of this outbreak. We will reduce the numbers, we will reduce the ICU beds and we will reduce the deaths. But the government won't release its Omicron modelling until next week. The Premier denies the March 3rd reopening is conveniently said just after he returns from Sydney for his court case with Clive Palmer. He insists he will do his full seven days in isolation regardless. I'll be in a hotel room, working from a hotel room, uh, doing a full seven days uh, and uh, just so there can be no argument that somehow by anyone that somehow this was put in place to benefit myself. With a rush of people expected to start booking their flights in coming days. Natalie Forrest for 10 News First. But not everyone will be happy that we will open up in the next fortnight. Businesses are of course relieved that they now have some certainty but with a return of capacity limits that will hurt the budget bottom line for some operators. A sigh of relief from businesses as the government decides on a date to unlock travel into WA. We, are, we welcome the fact um, that that reopening date is within two weeks. Uh, the earlier that comes, the better. And so it's a great, uh, great news and great day for WA businesses. Families separated by two years of border closures relieved too. But the reopening, a double-edged sword with venue restrictions to be reinstated once again. The two square metre rule and the 75% cap for cinemas and the stadium uh, is really going to be hard uh, for tourism businesses and hospitality and major events uh, that have struggled for the past two years. These restrictions are a necessary trade-off in order to move forward with a more open economy. Uh, we need to reconnect with the nation. We need to reconnect with the world. Bottle shops also relieved they'll no longer need proof of vaccination. It means that our guys are no longer on the front line where people will start to vent their anger towards them 
But a warning, the hospitality industry could be decimated if the government tightens restrictions to a level two during an outbreak. We can't afford to see a one in four me a square metre rule come back into Western Australia. It killed businesses last time, it destroyed their viability. We would be, we are urging the state government not to go to phase two uh, unless we're looking at an absolute dire scenario. Both the border announcement and restrictions welcomed by doctors. With that, WA's health system will not go to uh, black status. Uh, it won't crumble. It will be able to cope with that. Uh, but of course, that is with the rider that we will still need to cancel elective surgery. With a warning to urge relatives to get vaccinated as cases inevitably surge. It's absolutely essential that if you have loved ones in aged care that you check their vaccine status and take measures to ensure that they're boosted. This will give them the best protection. Amelia Simpson, 14 News First.